This is an early electronic oven from Hot Point, sister company of General Electric. Uh, it was built in 1971, uh, which is 40 years ago. This is a 915 megahertz uh, electronic oven. Basically, it's a microwave. This is the 915 megahertz antenna here, and it's fed in the back from the waveguide. It's inputted here. Of course, that's the range light. Up here is the uh, 15 ohm sensor that fits the solid state temperature dis uh, control for the regular oven portion. This is the broil coil. Down here is a regular bake coil. It's got a turntable, turns on with a motor about once a minute. Even out the um, cooking on this. This is a 915 megahertz oven. Uh, at the time, they called it an electronic oven. It had a list price of around $1,150 in 1971. Uh, we bought it for $875. Uh, the name plate up on here uh, is this is 18.1 kilowatt oven, which is a lot uh, for a range, but this is a double oven. Um, if you figure out the bottom oven is 3,000 watts for a regular um, oven, the top oven's 3,000, that's 6, and the cooktop with four burners is around 8, that's 14,000. There's an extra 4,000 left over for the microwave. There's probably around 3,000 input and maybe 1,500 watts, maybe to 2,000, I'm not sure, for the microwave portion. But this was, at the time, this was marketed really to cook a full range turkey because with the longer wavelength you could go through and uh, cook a big slice of meat, big hunk, big full piece of roast or turkey. That's where it was designed for. It really wasn't designed to cook uh, things like um, popcorn or anything or bacon. But anyways, here's the 915 megahertz antenna, uh, an early microwave. It's fed in the back by this the waveguide this particular oven went under water in Katrina so it saw water actually all the way up to the top the microwave portion has been taken out this is a hot point RHV 886 there's a sister model called the General Electric J 896 I'll take the camera off just for a minute in the bottom here there is a the waveguide is here in a regular Americana type oven, this bottom portion is a storage compartment for pots and pans, but the big microwave portion went up underneath here. That's the feed, that's the part from the magnetron shown in another video by I think Mr. Rudy uh, Deal. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. Uh, that's the feed point. It's around from the microwave going to the back. This is the motor here for revolving. The tray there's a whole bunch of different interlocks on this and I'm going to go around the back of this oven and show you some of the things here as far as the feed points down here is where the microwave actually from the magnetron fed through this tube goes up through here it almost looks like water pipe um, it's about a half inch by one inch diameter goes through here and this feeds the antenna on it so this is on a 915 megahertz oven uh, from the bottom tray the magnetron goes through here this is about four inches got a 90 degree elbow goes through here this feeds the antenna this is a back of a double oven uh, that's the circuit board here for the solid state control on the lower oven, common on a General Electric. Um, it's got two pots for bake and clean, and it's driven from the front, the control around here, um, down here. It's got a 29 ohm resistor for the temperature, and then it goes through on the board. In clean mode, they short out the resistor in the front and basically it's going to go around to 850 degrees roughly. There's a lot of interlocks down here. There's a relay that's used um, to lock out the door and 
There's also here a solenoid and another two switches. So this whole thing is set up. You could never open this thing up with the microwave oven. There's about three or four interlocks, plus there's another one hidden inside back with the door. So we've got this thing really very conservative designed as far as not getting hurt. And the control board here for the regular oven, it goes in series with the transform here, which is a basically a 12 volt transformer. Cooks up to the hot wire relay, and that's a gizmo that gets hot. Uh, and then it turns the contacts on. And on the self-cleaning oven, there's another gizmo here that uh, it's called the NAK switch, which is right here. And that little jewel is, is to go ahead and lock the oven door um, in self-cleaning mode. Plus, it has a feature. Um, there's two different features on this. Is one, this set of contacts closes. Uh, when it gets above 590 degrees to go through and um, turn the oven, lock the oven, and the other one is used just normally, it's shunted over in normal operation. This oven here went underwater during Katrina, so it's, it still works actually. I need to replace the terminal block here. And uh, the microwave oven portion kind of hasn't been used for about 12 years. It was completely junked. But the oven is actually in fairly good shape. And uh, need to replace the lower broil, uh, regular element on it. There's another gizmo in a self-cleaning oven here called the Smoke Eliminator. Uh, there's two different models of General Electric make. One is a current type. This has only got a resistance of about a third of an ohm. It's in series with the uh, bake and broil coil. And it actually is like a little, basically like a catalytic converter. It burns off the crud in self-cleaning self mode. It goes through the upper left burner. Uh, it's in series actually with the broil coil, which here, and then the mullion coil. The mullion heats the front door. So this oven's got a whole bunch of different things on it. It's been a challenge to figure out because um, the oven on the thing... There's no schematic, so I finally figured out this whole thing just through brute force. But it's been a real challenge. This is an RHV886 uh, 915 megahertz microwave oven uh, from 40 years ago. The microwave isn't used anymore, but um, to disable a lot of it and figure out how what could be abandoned has been a trick because I don't have a schematic. I finally figured out the whole schematic just through trial and error. And... That's it.